Hey guys, I've got some new artwork for you today. This was a, a artwork I made in Procreate and I'm just practicing trying to get better with the tool and more proficient and kind of do things faster. Uh, I don't have a camera today because we're moving and most of my stuff in the office is packed up and that's also why you might hear uh, some echo in, in my voice because uh, the room here is pretty empty. Anyway. The goal of this was really just to practice uh, the tool, procreate as a tool. And I, I didn't put any thought really into the actual design other than the composition itself, but no like, no f fantasy elements or anything. It's the subject is basically, I ended up going with just kind of a standing stone on a cliff overlooking this vista of these kind of green rolling hills with forests and a lake and the, the standing stone just came from uh it's just inspired by the standing stones i saw when i was in scotland which i thought were really cool on their own and you, it doesn't really need an explanation it doesn't have to be that deep and um, i i really just wanted to focus on uh practicing some of my some of my skills in in handling the brushes in photoshop and handling the tool in general since it's a, a smaller surface it's a little bit um it's a little bit awkward if you're used to working on a big surface like a cintiq or if you're used to working on big canvases uh, using traditional mediums it, it can be a little bit awkward to you know maneuver the small ipad and try and access all the tools and and still create something uh, to, to find like a workflow that feels natural it it, it can it can be hard and I, I find the best thing to do is just knock out a bunch of paintings and eventually the repetition like anything else will will catch up and you'll start feeling more comfortable with it what I end up doing is just taking a very simple approach with uh, the layers and I, I just have one layer in the background and one for the foreground and I just approach it like an oil painting where I I have a plan in my head I did a little plan sketch and I just start blocking in colors right over top I'm, I'm not very handy with the color adjustments and blending modes in procreate they seem to behave a little differently than in Photoshop and so I find it honestly just at this point anyway it's just quicker for me to paint right over top of my sketch and my plan with uh, some colors based on a palette that I I found from a reference so as far as brushes too I know a lot of people ask me this um, brushes I use a lot from my personal Photoshop brushes, but I found there's some default brushes in Procreate that work really, really well. Uh, and you could achieve this, you could achieve the exact same thing with the default brushes. You don't need custom brushes to uh, do anything you're seeing here. You can just use um, brushes that come with the software that are already loaded up. So I encourage you to just look through those I can give you a four that I uh, that I found really nice they're in the drawing tab if you go to your brush library they're in the drawing tab of brushes that are preloaded and they're called gloaming Oberon Eagle Hawk and Blackburn those are the four brushes um, that I really like there's a good mix of pressure sensitivity and you know um, versatility in terms of the size and the, the uh, shape dynamics and as well as I think Blackburn is the one that's kind of like a hard it's almost like a brush pen it's a it's a fully opaque kind of scratchy like dry brush look almost and you can uh, in conjunction with the other brushes you can you can achieve pretty much any texture or any shape or definition of form you need yeah, you can probably do it with those four brushes. And 
better yet, I would just go with a default round brush and just practice as much as you can just with that and see how far you can push things just with, just, uh, with a round brush. It's a really great exercise. Some of the other default uh, brushes, like if you go in the painting category in the brush library, it's a little bit it, painting and and like inking and I, I, I don't know, and some of the effects brushes. Some of them are okay, but if you tilt the pen or do any kind of, uh, you know, the, there's, there's weird effects that can happen depending on your pen tilt and the pressure that you're putting on the pen and I find those just hard to control and they're not consistent for me. I'm sure that if you practice with them, you could like really finesse them and get really cool, cool results. But for me, uh, I'm not there and I, I don't, I don't really like thinking about that kind of stuff because it, it feels hard to control for me. I like a brush that's just consistently making, I know exactly how it's going to behave when I, when I press it, uh, press it down. So yeah, this, this wasn't my favorite image when I was done, but I figured maybe you guys could get something out of seeing the process and how kind of all over the place it is. I was really just testing a ton of stuff and I, I found multiple moments in the, in the image where I wasn't happy with it. So I start reworking stuff and in hindsight, I wish I had pushed some shapes a bit further and pushed more of like a fantasy image because the, the subject itself is pretty uh it's pretty lame and and just you know there's not much to it I, I i wish i had gone with some more crazy shapes in the background for the mountains or the the geography um but i i learned what i don't want to do in the future which is a really valuable thing and it's something to always remember when you're painting you don't like something it's it's always just um that's just experience and it's it's adding up to uh give you better results in the future because you subconsciously you just you're just learning what you don't like and what doesn't work for you and you know after each painting even if it's not your favorite painting you'll you, you have a little bit more insight on what you're going to be thinking going into the next one and you'll have that thought right at the beginning instead of having to go through the whole process and and that's just being an artist that's every single image is going to have things wrong with it and you'll you'll just accumulate that much more knowledge going into your next one and they'll never be perfect but you'll get a little bit better every time and your your standards for uh what you deem to be good uh, will keep going up and that's how you get better as an artist. But it, it, this was done over a lot of sessions and it was really fun to f feel like uh, I was figuring things out. I ran into roadblocks and for example, the, the matting of the trees, the big kind of carpeting trees that are covering the landscape, trying to figure out in Procreate how to uh, deal with the noisiness of those shapes and where to simplify and where to use some custom brushes uh, without making anything too heavy hand. It was really fun and it, it's really satisfying when you find something that's working. And it just made me feel nostalgia for my, my Scotland trip last year. And yeah, it was just a fun, uh, this was a, a fun painting, even though the, the result isn't it's, it's not necessarily one that I am terribly proud of, but it was, it was a fun process. And yeah, I hope you guys, um, uh, hope you guys found something you can latch on to in this. Just don't be too hard, hard on yourself. And just remember that it's, it's a slow process and your, your next attempt, uh, you're, you're just going into it with a little bit more knowledge and before you know it, you'll, if you're just consistent, eventually you'll be, you'll be just be creating more and more stuff that's closer to your true kind of identity, and 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 that will end up being what separates you and makes you uh, a unique artist. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you like it. 
thank you as always for all your support and all my subscribers and i'll see you in the next one bye, -bye.